Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Calhoun's. Next week is Easter Sunday, and we'll be here, by the way. But right after our show, there's no better place for you, to take you, for you to take the family for a holiday meal than Calhoun's. Make your reservations at any of their nine area Calhoun's locations. ASAP, a taste of Tennessee for the holiday. Easter Sunday at Calhoun's. Take the family down there. All right, I want to welcome in the next member of the panel, Mike Griffith, who uh, I think you were the first guy out with the story on seccountry.com, really setting the table with all this stuff. You, got, you, you were the first one out, so... That's why you're back with us I was today at dinner working on my laptop when I got go. the email. There you so go. Sometimes it's just luck. Well, here's the thing. Very much off the top of this thing, uh, I am gonna run, I'm going to. i just going to run through the timeline. This list, before we put it up there, look, we pieced this together via the information that came out. There's stuff in here. There's stuff that still remains to be seen that, that we don't know. There was a lot of talk nationally, locally, about Gruden, which I never bought that one, but the, the Brom, Morris, Venables, all these guys, where are they? Did someone else talk to these guys? Was Philip Former talking to people? Peyton Manning talking to people? Did John Curry have a third burner phone that we don't know about? Because there was a lot of smoke, and yet it's not in these. But anyway, Is here's the phone burn. It's the phone burn, that's the smoke. <laughs> all right, let's go to the timeline very quickly. <laughs> On Sunday, uh, November 12th, Jones was fired. Jump forward to the last week. Uh, that's Saturday. Curry texts with Dan Mullen, actually tells his agent, I want to get him a memorandum of understanding. Curry also is texting with Mike Gundy about meeting with him on Monday the 27th. Sunday, Mullen gets serious with Florida, cuts off communications with Tennessee, takes the Florida job. Curry is in Columbus, Ohio, begging to hear from Joe DiPietro, the president. The president won't get back to him, and he finally gets word that the president won't talk until after mass. So he waits for five hours. The deal gets done with Shiano. Story leaks, fans react on social media, donors and politicians really get involved, and the deal is killed. All right, move forward to Monday. Curry communicates with Mike Gundy. They're texting, they're talking on the phone. Thornton, Thunder Thornton, John Thunder Thornton, big friend of Philip Fulmer and a booster, texts DiPietro on the 27th and includes the message, Fire Curry, hire Fulmer. Tuesday, November 28th, Curry meets with Gundy down in Dallas. Curry texts with Doran's agent, that's Dave Doran in NC State. Gundy decides to stay at Oklahoma State. Wednesday, the 29th, Thunder Thornton texts G. Pietro again to say that Philip Fulmer told him that morning he would coach if asked. That same day, Fulmer is in, NC, is in Raleigh meeting with Dave Doran with John Curry. Interesting timing. Thursday, big day here, November 30th. The agent for Dave Doran tells Curry that, oh, man, he's fired up. Then fans of Tennessee begin their social media attacks on Doran. The agent then begs Curry to make contact with him. He hears nothing. Doran signs a new deal with NC State. Curry flies to Los Angeles to meet with Leach, Mike Leach, despite instructions from Beverly Davenport to return to Knoxville. Curry then breaks off the meeting with Leach, returns to Knoxville, and the next day, Curry is suspended with pay. Fulmer is hired as AD. And... Six days later, Fulmer hires Jeremy Pruitt as your head coach. Now, Curry's travel is pieced together through phone records, all right? This is from <laughs> November 12th to the 30th. These are the main places he was. And some of these could just be airports because he wasn't there long. But Chicago, Charlotte, Philadelphia, Chicago again, Orlando, Knoxville, the Bahamas for the UT basketball trip, Columbus, Ohio, Lexington, Kentucky, back to Knoxville, back to Columbus, then to Dallas, then to Raleigh, then to L.A., then back to Knoxville to be hanged. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been let's, everywhere. Man. Yeah, now, <laughs> let's talk about the text that got the most ire, drew the most ire out of all this. Dan Wolken, writer for USA Today, John Curry, athletic director of Tennessee. Dan Wolken writes and says, great hire, man, seriously. That's what he texts him when the word gets out that it's Shiano. Curry responds, going to need some help on the PR. Our people are wacko. Skip forward, you actually get a text from somebody saying, Greg Schiano did nothing when a victim of Sandusky approached him about his abuse. That's not even the right accusation. People were so far off yeah. the reservation. The accusation hasn't been proven, but they don't even have the accusation right. But anyway, Dan Wilkin responds, I'll help. Not sure they'll listen, lots of laughs. I know he's a very good coach, and he's about the right stuff. Gentlemen, let's talk about, first, the Dan Wilkin communications with John Curry. Mike, you're the first one. You, this is your first segment, so jump in and talk to me about uh, those conversations. If, if you go back and look up Dan Wilkins' history, he's been very much pro Shiano for his whole career. If I looked it up and over Twitter and his past columns and he was negative against Shiano, then he writes the PR piece, and I'm at, do we have that next full screen? Chris, I'm afraid I jumped out on you. The next day, he put up a column that said meltdown over potential hiring of Greg Shiano is a bad look for Tennessee's program. My guess is he would have written that anyway. 
but you put it together with that text, and a lot of people are taking it. He wouldn't have written that if, if Curry hadn't asked. Guys, you're, you've been reporters. Your thoughts on that part of it? Well, I, there's irony to me because when I was covering the Tennessee basketball beat, Dan Wolken was the biggest critic of Bruce Pearl, and that was the program that, that John Curry oversaw. Dan Wolken's a Vanderbilt graduate who essentially trolled Tennessee sports the entire time he was at Memphis Commercial Appeal. Right, let's take and now he's an ally with John Curry, and he's getting in trouble because he was going to do PR for Tennessee. So that's the irony to me. So are you saying me. you don't buy that it was PR, or are you saying that he's just a hired gun for sale? I'm just saying he's a reporter and that he's going to tell an AD what an AD wants to hear that's providing him information that allows him to break stories. You guys ever come, I and mean, here's the thing, I think writers and coaches and athletic directors communicate. Yes. This one looks bad because of what came out. I'm just, again, if he had been an anti-Shiano guy and then suddenly he's a pro-Shiano guy, it would stand out. I'd be waving the red flags. I just don't, I think you'd probably have written that anyway. And I think it's being taken in a different direction because it fits a narrative. And I don't think the narrative is exactly true on that point. Uh, you, Am I wrong? You have relationships with the people that you cover in lots of situations. I've had people approach me when I was covering outdoors, hey, after a big contentious meeting, what are you going to write? And I was like, oh, you're probably going to like it because I agree with that person's position. I've also told them you're going to hate it because I think it was handled poorly. And, and I don't see anything in here, and the key is what you said. I didn't know it until you told me about it, that Walken had supported Shiano time and time you can, again. You can search Okay, so, so you're, not, you're not going off the reservation with that. The problem then comes, though, if you're agreeing with somebody and writing a story simply to keep them, as Mike said. If you're yes. agreeing with people and writing stories for them because you, you get information, then you are a shill. And you don't have any business doing what you did, right? Jimmy, there are a lot of people saying he's got the business, he's, he's finished. Mm -hmm. That's Tennessee folks saying, you're finished, you're rotten, you're awful. I, I just don't think it's that strong. Uh, I, I don't know. Here's, here's the deal. If, you, if you've been in this for a long time, you're going to build relationships and you're going to have people uh, ask you to help you with PR like that occurred. Here's the deal. That's not uncommon. This, I think it is mm -hmm. for a lot of people. A lot of people are like, wow. No, it happens all the time. Mike, I know you've had people ask you to do favors. I've had people ask me to do favors or the PR part of it. But hypothetically, if somebody had said, hey, uh, you need to give us a positive PR about the hiring of Derek Dooley, no, because I didn't right. think it was a good hire. Right. So I'm not. But if you right. agree now, with what they're doing. Which is what going back to what Bob said, whenever Bruce Pearl was hired, yes, I thought that was a really good hire from Tennessee's perspective. So I don't need anybody to tell me which way to go. Have I been asked? Yes. But I would only do that. I was going to do it anyway. Well, the bottom line I, is you got to sleep at night. You know, you mm -hmm. as a reporter, you got to determine what you really believe and what you can sleep with at night and what you believe to be truth. I mean, you want to be as cooperative as you can to people that are cooperating with you, but not to the point where you're going to alienate your own bottom line. There's, there's your just things that come with the business. If you're a doctor, you go to a party, somebody asks you, say, hey, my shoulder hurts, doc. Can you tell me something right. about it? They don't ask Jimmy uh, that. Right, well, <laughs> I, the beginning is, I see, I'd be all for running him out on a rail again if his history was yes, anti-Shiano. Right. It mm -hmm. isn't. So that's, in fact, the conversation started by him saying, hey, great hire, man, because he likes yeah. Shiano. Uh, the inside baseball aspect of it, let me go off on a quick tangent. The movie The Aviator, Martin Scorsese, it's about Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes goes in front of the government. This actually, you can go look at the old tapes. They're, up, they're around films. Uh, he meets the government, and the government's trying to smack him for uh, buying off Air Force contracts. He was, he was bribing officials, and the senators are trying to grill him over it. Oh, you, you, were, you were bribing them. And he says, yeah, in our industry, that's what you do. If you want to change the laws, I'll abide by the laws. But right now, that's what everybody does, and the senator has to go, oh, because he doesn't understand that industry. He doesn't understand the inside baseball, and I think that's a little bit of what this looks like. People yeah. just say, he wrote that because of this. It's like, eh, not necessarily. Right. All right, the wacko thing. Our people are wacko. Obviously, he didn't mean for that to go out, and he's saying it while there are people protesting on campus over a football hire, but you can't call your people wacko. <laughs> I mean, it, and if, if you're doing it, you better make sure it never comes out. No, Don't, you can't, I mean, but some of them are. <laughs> In every fan base, there are In every wackos, fan right. base. I mean, I'm a there Tennessee fan and a Vikings fan. There's wackos in both of them. I've been sitting where I sit for a long time, and yes, I can name you the wackos. We could put their pictures up here. I, I, if he says some of our people are wacko, I have less problems. Yes, agree. Yeah. Agree. Or our people are passionate. No one has any problem then, right? 
<laughs> right, but I think there are some uh, in every fan base. There are some who are more passionate. passionate. Buying lots They're of wacko. Tennessee stuff. Right. Wacko's going and poisoning the tree down at Auburn. Uh, yeah, wacko's poisoning the tree, or well, we'll all right. Uh, when we come back, <laughs> petitions. Uh, when we come back, though, we're going to talk about Philip Fulmer's role in all of this. What, he did, what role did he play? And we saw some of those texts from his buddy and business partner Thunder Thornton to Joe DiPietro, the president. Also. We'll get a little football here. Tennessee growing that staff and growing that staff. We'll talk about an increased commitment to football. We're talking a little bit of this. Not money, a little bit of that. Come on back.